Hello everybody and welcome to Red Pill, the show where I tell you about how all the problems in society are caused by women. No, oh, but can you imagine if I was like that? Merry Christmas, motherfuckers! Let's talk about The Matrix Resurrections, the fourth film in the Now Matrix quadrilogy and a movie, as well as series, that I only decided to watch for YouTube content. I'm gonna avoid doing a no-spoiler section for this movie because I honestly have no idea how to get my thoughts on this without spoiling. Most I can say is that this movie is weird and better than the two sequels that came before it. So uh, with that out of the way, let's discuss this augmented reality of a sequel. So The Matrix Resurrections follows up after Matrix Revolutions, I believe 60 years later, except The Matrix is designed so it's only been about 20. And as a sequel, it's kind of weird, but also works, in my opinion. Uh, there's moments in this movie where it feels like the entire trilogy wrapped up into one requel, but then most of the movie feels like a genuine follow-up to the trilogy while simultaneously feeling like it's gone back to the roots of the original 1999 movie. Which, given my biggest complaints about Reload and Revolutions, it actually feels very nice to watch a Matrix movie and actually have it feel like a Matrix movie. Resurrections is the first time that a Matrix sequel actually felt like a sequel to The Matrix to me personally and I'm happy that it does. I'm also happy to say that a movie coming out almost 20 years after its last doesn't feel like a soulless cash grab at the name, but more like Lana Wachowski looked at the way the modern world runs, the way we use technology now compared to how we used it in 1999, and it inspired her to make this movie. There's a lot of weird, trippy moments in here that feels like the technology used to create the Matrix and the technology used outside of the Matrix has been upgraded so much throughout the years, almost as if it's a commentary on the modern day. Technology now has lent itself to places like Twitter and YouTube, which have lent itself to the political scheme being absolute fucking hellfire with pathetic Fox turning the most tiniest shit into World War V, which is how we have Neil Patrick Harris being the villain of this movie and being written to be a complete anti-SJW, and I fucking love it. Seriously, the moment Neil started going on a monologue about how the world just only sees in fiction and their feelings and that facts are the only thing important and that it doesn't care about fiction and feelings, or, or saying that women used to be so easy to control, I was completely on board, because any moment where anti-SJWs get dunked on is an automatic 10 out of 10 in my book. The the plot of this movie, from what I can understand, is that Neo died in revolutions and was carried away from the machines as we saw. But what we didn't see was that he was apparently thrown back into a brand new Matrix that was created by Neil Patrick Harris, which I guess would end up being the new architect. And what fuels this Matrix the most is the love and connection between Neo and Trinity, hence why they're the two biggest pods put so close to each other, but separated enough that it wouldn't break the simulation. With Neo being the new architect, he feeds Neo a diet of blue pills so he can continue believing in the Matrix despite constant times his past keeps bringing itself back into his mind. Oh yeah, also because of Neo's past, he's completely turned the trilogy into a trilogy of games in this Matrix, which lends itself into some massive headache moments, and I love all of it. The original trilogy existing in this universe lends itself to some of the characters even making fun of the live-action Titanfall found in Revolutions, giving the same exact criticism as I and probably many others did to that movie, and I fucking love that so much. Eventually, Neo is brought out of the Matrix, and the plot after that is to bring Trinity out of it, which they eventually do, and it's soon revealed that Trinity is the one of this matrix along with the fact that neo is still the one not entirely sure how that works but again the matrix has always been confusing though this still all somehow kind of makes sense with the pre-established lore from reloaded where the architect in that movie tells neo that what he's done has already been done five or six times before him and will continue being done which is pretty much what happens in this movie except like i said neo is still the one along with trinity Ah, fuck it, whatever. But in the end, Neo and Trinity get to be the rulers of the Matrix and create their own world together, and it's overall a really nice moment. Now, that's not to say this movie was perfect. There is an entire Zion-like area created by Jada Pinkett Smith who actually did reprise her role to play a very older version of her character, which was pretty nice, to be honest. Um, but... All the moments of this just reminded me of Reloaded to the point that I lost all enjoyability I had for this movie whenever the fuck we were at this location. Like I said in my Matrix trilogy review, the moment that I felt like the Matrix movies stopped feeling like the Matrix movies was the moment we got to Zion. And so, same goes for here. The moment I stopped feeling like this movie was a Matrix movie, was the moment we got to fucking Zion 2. But thankfully, after Neil Patrick Harris is revealed to be an anti-SJW, uh, we're no longer in this fucking new Zion, uh, or at least we're in, a we're in it a lot less, and eventually completely out of it. And uh, the movie directs itself back into its 99 Matrix feel, which uh, is very good. 
Only other complaints I have with this movie is that Lawrence Fishburne and Hugo Weaving have been recast in this movie. And I guess they make it make sense in the story with the OG Morpheus dying and having to be replaced with this new half-suit, half-Morpheus, who is actually a joy to be around. And then the new Agent Smith is given kind of a similar backstory, but not all that explained. I don't even think it's really that explained at all. That it honestly makes me still very confused how it works. But I will say that I really liked the moment that the agent of this movie says that he can be whoever he wants, and immediately afterwards the entire town is out to get them, which kind of felt like a callback to the ending of Revolutions with Agent Smith being everyone in the Matrix. How that works out logically, I don't fucking know, nor do I really care to be honest. All I know is this movie finally feels like a proper sequel to the original, giving me the same feelings that the original gave me. The sense of confusion while still being entertained. It has a lot more down moments compared to the original, but like I said in the beginning, it is far fucking better than the two abandonments that came before it. Which is why in the ranking of Matrix films, I put Resurrection as the best Matrix film because there's a Batman figuring in it. 10 out of 10! Nah, but seriously, I put Resurrections at number two with a nice solid seven. The first and third act pretty much make me feel mostly what I felt from the first movie. It's just this utter sense of confusion and distortion while still ultimately being very entertaining. And with the third act, it just carries itself out with a very nice, wholesome victory that I really enjoyed. God, I hope they don't make a sequel to this, or a sequel to the sequel to this, because all I can see in that is just Reloaded 2 and Revolutions 2, and dear God, we don't need those. And of course, everyone has their own opinion, but my opinion is the best opinion. I'm sure you figured that out already.